Hello, this is Ashley from Crafting with Ashley, and welcome to this Christmas card making tutorial. This is the cute card you're making. Isn't it lovely? It actually shows you a number of different techniques. So we're going to be colouring, we're going to be doing some ink blending, and we're also going to be doing some embossed resist. So let's get on and do that. So we're going to do some stamping. This is the stamps that we're going to be using, Reindeer Fun. I'm going to be using a variety of images and sentiments from this set. So let's get a block and stamp. We're going to be stamping in Memento Tuxedo Black because that's an alcohol marker friendly ink and we are going to be colouring and using the Stamp and Blend alcohol markers. So let's stamp this lovely little image of the deer and, and a baby. Give that a clean using the Simple Chamois, one of my favourite tools in the craft room. Now we're going to stamp these little trees and I'm just getting a smaller block and we're going to be stamping this using shaded spruce ink. So let's do that quickly. We need a few of these. So there we go. We've got three of them. And I like to do things in uneven numbers. I feel it just looks better on the eye. Okay, so let's set that aside now. And now I've got here a piece of basic white cardstock. And this measures 14.35 centimeters by 10. And I'm just cutting with my scissors. Um, a snowbank as you can see and where I think there's any harsh lines I'm just rounding it and smoothing it with my scissors and leave that for scrap and that's going to be my snowbank that you can see here okay so now I'm just lining that up on my grid paper so we can stamp the Merry Christmas and I'm going to stamp that in Memento Tuxedo Black again just here at the bottom there we go. Merry Christmas. Set that aside. Now bring back our little images and we're going to colour in using the Stamp and Blend Out Carl Markers as I said. And the two colours, I'm only going to use two colours for this deer and that's Crumb Cake, the Light and the Dark and then Petal Pink, the Light and the Dark. And here I'm just going around the little deer image um, with my darker colour and I'm just, you know, outlining the areas where I think there'll be shadow, where I want it to be a little bit darker just all the way around and the same for the little fawn here I think she's darling this little baby I don't know why I think of it as a little girl but I do a little baby girl and then I'm going to go out and I'm going to blend everything out using my crumb cake light and you can see me hear me doing this and I just change the orientation of the paper for some reason I find it easier to colour to the side like this so everyone's different you do what is easier for you what works for you and I'm just blending that out and I tend to go backwards and forwards between my light and my dark as you'll see me doing here until I am happy with the blend that I get and just to be a little careful as those legs are quite thin and I don't want the ink to bleed if I can help it so there we go and you'll notice I haven't coloured in the underbelly. The underbelly and the tail and the ears I'm going to use the petal pink on. So you can see here I'm going back with my darker colour and I'm just adding some dot detail in places just to give a little bit more interest to my deer. And now I realise I haven't coloured in my baby girl here down here so I go back to my light colour and just colour in and this is why I like the fine tips of the blends because it makes it much easier to colour in gives you much more control on these very small small images compared to the brush tip or it does for me anyway okay so now I'm just going to go in with the petal pink and as I said we're going to use this on her underbelly her tail and the ear so I went in with a dark and now I'm just going to blend everything out with the light. And I know you can't really see the difference very well here on the camera, but in the still shots on the blog post, you will be able to see that. So now we're going to cut it out using the matching dies that I'm just showing you there. And if by magic, everything is cut out and ready. So now we're going to work on our background. So I have here a piece of pool party cardstock, and this measures 14.35 centimeters by 10. And I'm going to ink blend again in pool party, but I wanted it to be this color so that it would be 
it would help me to get my blend but first we're going to do a little bit of embossed resist stamping so I'm just getting my pieces out and I'm going to start off with my sentiment here and my snowflakes so I'm just using my powder tool to put some powder down so that my embossing powder will only stick where I've got versa marking and I'm being good and generous with that now here I'm inking up my inking up my what you call it my stamp pad my in my ink my lost my words my stamp and there you can see I inked it with Versamark sticky ink and I've put you I've used white embossing powder on the top so now I'm just seeing where my back my snow back will go so I can roughly see where I want to put some snowflakes and I'm just going in and stamping those you won't be able to see it because it is a sticky clear ink but you will see where they are once I put the embossing powder on so there we go if by magic all the embossing appears now I'm just going to check where the snow bank is add a few more snowflakes where I think it needs it it's very easy to overdo it at this point well it is for me anyway as you can tell difficult to know when to stop and just do those few little edges and I've decided that is enough as good as a feast so now I'm heat embossing this so I took my embossing tool let it heat up for about 30 seconds before I brought it to the paper so it's good and hot when it touches the paper and this tends to help it heat up more quickly and helps to stop the paper warping so now it's all heat set and dried so now I have got some scrap here of my grid paper that I've already used for inking and I've got my small blending brushes I've tended to use these more and more as I like the control they give me and I've also got a little cloth to the side a microfiber cloth so I can wipe off the ink where it sits on top of my um, heat embossing because the heat embossing will resist the ink and I'm just really deepening this color so it looks like a lovely winter scene for the sky and I'm just going in and just blending that working it until I get the blend that I'm really happy with and you can see here I'm just going around with it and I sped this up on the camera but it does take time to work at it and get the blend that you want so don't be afraid to do that and I'm just making sure that I've got the ink blending everywhere where the um, the snow bank doesn't cover so now as you can see I'm going to take my microfiber cloth and rub off all the ink that's sitting on top of my heat embossing and it will come up again bright white and there we have our background isn't that pretty I really love how this turned out it's so gorgeous so now we can stick our snow bank to our card and I'm just using my Tombow mono adhesive to do this my liquid adhesive and just stick that down there we go and now we're ready to stick this to our card base now our card base is thick basic white this is a standard A6 card base that's an A4 sheet cut in half and then folded in half and my piece of pull part is just a bit smaller than the card base that so gives us lovely white border now we're ready to put our trees and our deer in place so I'm going to pop some things up and some things I'm going to have flat um, I'm going to pop this tree up so I get my dimensionals out and put that one down there and then this other one up at the top so there we go lovely now here's my little deer I'm going to put dimensionals all over the back of my deer and the little baby now is a good time to say if you're enjoying this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscription button um, it really helps the videos become more visible on YouTube and if you want more information about the project the supply list the measurements etc it is all on the blog post and you can find that in the description box below okay so we're covering the back of our little 
dear image with dimensionals. I am very generous of my adhesive of my dimensionals, as you may know if you've watched for videos before this. But I really want this to stick down and stay stuck down. I don't want it coming apart in the post because that would be awful. If you like this stamp set, the Reindeer Fun, which why wouldn't you? It's a gorgeous stamp set. I love it. Um, I'll link below at the end of this video some more videos using this project for more inspiration. So do check those ones out as well. Okay, so now we're ready to stick our little deer down as our focal image. And I just, oh, I just love it. It's so pretty. So there are the two cards. As I said, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscription button. And until next time, enjoy being creative. Bye.